If there's any such thing as a cute fish, this has to be it. It's a little shell dweller from Lake Tanganyika. Actually, it's two different species, and we'll tell you how to tell them apart in this FinCast. Oh, we use the uh, extreme fish food quite a bit in our shop. Um, we like it very much. Uh, it's very palatable for the fish. We, uh, a lot of times fish that don't eat other things will eat the pellets, which is a great thing. Hi everybody, John here with another FinCast, and today we want to talk about a couple of little shell dwellers from Lake Tanganyika. Uh, if you're new to keeping fish, you might not understand what I'm talking about, so let me just back that out just a little bit. In Africa, there are three rift lakes, Lake Victoria, Lake Tanganyika, and Lake Malawi, and the fish that come from each of these are slightly different, but they all kind of like the hard water that comes from these lakes that were formed uh, in Africa when the continents were separating and created a rift. And these lakes are among the oldest lakes in the world. And Lake Tanganyika, I'm quite sure, is considered to be the oldest. And so the fish that have been there have been evolving over a longer period of time and fish in other parts of the world and so they've developed all these little niches and so uh, as a fish keeper if you are going to keep a certain type of cichlid together typically you would keep Lake Tanganyikan cichlids only with Lake Tanganyikan cichlids although a lot of people will go over to like a Malawi which is the next lake in the chain and keep those together the Malawi cichlids tend to be uh, I would say a little bit more aggressive but also a little bit more colorful. Um, and then uh, Lake Victoria cichlids tend to be kept by themselves and they tend to be super aggressive. So Victoria, Malawi, Tanganyika. Within Lake Tanganyika, uh, there are very many species and today I wanna to talk about two that are called shell dwellers, which means they literally live in the shells of snails that have uh, discarded them on the bottom of the lake. And so they're little small fish that swim in and out of these shells and they have babies and the babies live in the shells and you can get colonies of these fish and it's really cool. Well, two of the most popular are a similis and a multifasciatus, two different types. They look very similar. The multis are a little bit smaller. So I've got some video that I want to show you. This was gathered at the Global Pet Expo and this time uh, you've seen my uh, videos with Rick Biro, who does most of my cichlid adventure videos now uh, and he's a wholesaler or actually he's a, a, a fish farmer who sells to wholesalers based out of Florida but his wife Tamala uh, is the one who handles these shell dwellers for their for their fish farm and she's very good at it very knowledgeable but um, Tamala doesn't like to go on camera so uh, she agreed to give me the lowdown about it uh, so we'll show you the fish and we'll be listening to Tamala first we're going to have her talk a little bit about the similis. Well, if you look at the similis right here, the darker ones, you'll see the band comes down over the forehead. You can always tell a multifasciatus from a similis by that, other than a few other different characteristics. But that one is a dead on uh, way to recognize them, even when they're really tiny. And the similis gets bigger than a, than a multi? Yes, right here you'll see the similis. Um, those are breeding size right now, uh, but they can get a little bit bigger, whereas the multi fasciatus don't get too much bigger than what we have here. Okay, and so I'm seeing some similis that are lighter and some that are darker. Can you tell males from females? N no, not really. That's not the way to tell them. Okay. You, ju you just have to flip them and tube them. Flip them and tube them right now. That one's diving for the rock right now. He is but making his little house in there, and he's okay. probably uh, thinking about making a home. <laughs> gotcha. So are these an aggressive fish, a non-aggressive fish? When what they're breeding, here? they can be very aggressive. They will take over a whole area. Gotcha. And you you wouldn't keep these with the larger Tanganyikans, or you could if there was a colony going on in the tank? What would you do? Uh, they can go with uh, other Tanganyikans. Um, that's not going to be a problem, but they're going to need to have little hiding places, and, and you can put them in a shell, uh, which a lot of people do, but as for me, I, as a breeder, I breed them in pipes. 
and then tell me, you were telling me how you breed them in pipes. How do you do that? It's a little uh, elbow pipe with a cap on the end of it, and I find that I like that better because when I'm breeding them, um, I don't have to shake the shells like a lot of people do, and you can get all of the babies by taking the cap off and uh, getting every baby that they've got there. So you let them have the babies in the tube, and then you... Then I take them away. take them out of the, of the PVC pipe. Correct. And their water parameters, pH, and that kind of stuff for breeding, what do you do? Same for all Tanganyikans. Hard, they like hard water, 7, 8, they do well. 76, 77 degrees. And you just heard her talk about the Similis. Now let's hear what she has to say about the Multifasciatus. Um, I think they're pretty docile really unless they're starting to breed and then they do get a little feisty and they take over a little area um, but you'll notice that uh, the, the difference between the similis and the multifasciatus is that the barring behind the head is further back and there the similis is on the forehead um, they, I breed them just like the other Shelleys at the hatchery they breed in a little a uh, pipe instead of a shell, but you can do them in shells, but I find that I can never get them out of the shells once they're in there. Okay, and they got that beautiful blue eye. Do they keep oh, that the Oh, yes, time? that is gorgeous, and that's one of the things I love about them. But they're just cute little um, fish to have in the tank. I find this very enjoyable. Now, the multis, so you keep them with Julie's and other small Correct. Tanganyikans. Correct, yes. And, but they do like to have a shell or you yeah, they to have to have a hiding. Yes, they have to have a hiding place because sometimes the other Julies will get aggressive toward them, so they do need some kind of coverage. All right, and then the sandy bottom is that critical for them? For they like the sandy bottom, but it's not critical. I breed uh, with a. Well, most people won't do this in their house, but my tank is completely bare except for the pipes and the shells. Gotcha. Uh, and what do you do to get them in breeding condition? Well, we feed them our own formula, which is extreme aquatic foods, and I feed that to all of my breeders. And then when, my, uh, when I have my babies, as everyone knows, all the shell dwellers are very tiny. They look like little mosquitoes when you take them away. So th I do the brine shrimp, and the minute they can start eating food, I feed them the nano extreme. Gotcha. Okay. And the uh, aggressiveness of the multis or, or when you get a bunch of them in a colony they they do well they, they do kind of very well and they're very protective they will raise the young in there with them with uh, the other fish i find out of all of them the multis are the best the melagris and the worst i think is the golazolatus they they love to eat their babies but the multis will do very well very well nice. all right so Anything else that a hobbyist would want to know about keeping multis? I think you'd love it. I really do. I, I think they're cute little fish and they just have a, a spunky little personality. These are really engaging little fish and I've kept them here and there in various uh, community Tanganyikan tanks. And the thing that I think you will find with the Tanganyikan cichlids in particular is that they tend to have more personality and less color, although I love the blue eyes on these little shell dwellers. And then if, you, uh, if you're uh, interested, of course, in the Malawi cichlids, they tend to be super colorful. Their body shapes tend to be the same. And in my opinion, they have just a little bit less personality or more similar personalities to one another. Whereas these little shell dwellers, they do their shell thing. And, other, and there's other species as well, shell dwellers from Tanganyika besides these two. But um, I think that a Tanganyikan tank uh, is interesting because you have all the different personalities in these fish that have evolved to kind of do different things, almost like fish on a reef in the ocean. Thank you for watching this FinCast. Please click around. I'm sure that you will find uh, some other things, of course, a lot of other Tanganyikan stuff, including how to set up a Tanganyikan tank, uh, which I think you'll enjoy. And uh, please just let me know what you think. I love your comments down below. And if you would subscribe, that would be great. Uh, we're coming up on 10,000 subscribers, and that's a personal goal of mine. So if you would subscribe, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next FinCast.